In today's video, I'm going to talk about a new tool that I have been experimenting with. So first I will lay out the theoretical foundation, and then I'm going to give you a few practical examples of how it works. This tool starts with basic Fibonacci ratios, but it has an interesting twist using the convergence of two mathematical constants. One of the specific ratios found in the Fibonacci sequence and a very famous constant known as Euler's number, which we'll talk about in a moment. This new concept can be applied to vertical ratios, horizontal ratios, and dynamic studies in like channels and pitchforks, as we'll see later. Let's first quickly review where Fibonacci ratios come from, and then we'll move on to the Euler's number. Fibonacci ratios come from the Fibonacci sequence, which is a series of numbers that start with 0 and 1. To know the next number in the series, you always sum the last two numbers. That's all there is to it. By knowing this rule, you can discover all the numbers in the sequence. We can express this rule mathematically with the following formula. The current number in the sequence is the sum of the last two numbers in the sequence. Fibonacci ratios are the numbers that appear when we divide one Fibonacci number by the other. For example, if we divide one Fibonacci number by the previous number, we get the golden ratio, which is 1.618. If we divide a number by the number two positions back, we get 2.618. For instance, if we divide the 16th Fib number, which is 987, by the 15th Fibonacci number, which is 610, we get 1.618. If we divide the 16th Fib number, 987, by the 14th Fib number, 377, we get 2.618. This works for the entire Fibonacci series, except for the first terms. That's what's special about these ratios. They are constant across the whole sequence. Fibonacci ratios can be found across nature, like in the Nautilus shell, the shape of hurricanes, and so on. Most traders already know this, since Fibonacci ratios have become widely famous in the retail trading domain. However, the Fibonacci ratios are not the only constants that can be found in different places of nature. Here we begin to talk about another quite famous mathematical constant called Euler's number which is approximately 2.718. Euler's number is the base of natural logarithms, and it can be found by the sum of an infinite series like so. The natural exponential function f of x equals e to the x is the only function that equals its own derivative. Euler's number also appears in a continuously compounding formula, which is widely used in finance, in Euler's identity, which relates Euler's number pi in the imaginary unit i, and it's also found in the probability density function of the normal distribution. Generally speaking, Euler's number is related to how things grow or decay exponentially. Two famous examples of Euler's number in nature are the rate of population growth in living organisms and the radioactive decay of heavy elements like uranium. The point here is that Euler's number can be found in many different places in the same way the Fibonacci ratios can. That's a property of mathematical constants. Interestingly for traders, the Euler's number 2.718 is very close to one of the most used Fibonacci ratios, 2.618. This is a special case where two mathematical constants almost converge to the same value. This opens an interesting perspective for traders because it's often difficult to choose which Fibonacci ratios to use exactly because there are too many of them. By aligning Euler's number with the Fibonacci ratio 2.618, we can create some sort of narrow zone that can be used by traders in the traditional sense of support and resistance, for example. The argument that sustains the use of Euler's number in the charts is precisely the same one that sustains the use of Fibonacci ratios. These mathematical constants seem to appear in many unexpected places, and we can observe them in price charts, although it's not perfectly clear why. Let's observe a practical application of this concept of the Euler Fibonacci zone. We'll begin by using the Fibonacci extension tool, and we'll add the Euler's number 2.718 to it. This creates a small horizontal zone. In this chart, you can see how I placed the Fibonacci extension tool in the price vectors highlighted in blue. Notice how price creates a significant reversal once it enters the Euler Fibonacci zone highlighted in green. Once again, the advantage here is being able to focus on a specific and narrow range instead of looking for too many ratios. As a parenthesis, 
Recall that I said that this can be useful because it narrows down the choice of which Fibonacci ratio you should use in certain cases. Having too many options to choose from creates what's called the paradox of choice. When there are too many options, the decision-making process becomes harder. It's a paradox because having more options is associated with the ease that goes along with the freedom of choice. This is a big problem nowadays because there are too many options in any domain, so we end up wasting too much time choosing. In this other chart, we can see the application of the Euler Fibonacci zone in the modified shift version of the Andrews pitchfork. The black lines represent the normal fork, and the blue lines are the 2.618 and 2.718 ratios. Observe how the narrow zone captures the way in which price expands from the price vectors highlighted in red, something that you would not be able to see with the standard ratios of the fork. In this other image, we can see another example using the modified shift fork. The Euler Fibonacci zone captures the price expansion in the high with good frequency at the upper shadows, and later, it ends up capturing the lows while price is rising. In the same chart, we can plot another modified shift fork with the Euler Fibonacci zone extension to it. Notice how this fork captures the price expansion in another way, now with down sloping lines. It also ends up capturing one important low later as well. Here we have another nice example of the Fibonacci extension tool plotted on the two price vectors highlighted in black. Notice how the Euler Fibonacci zone captures the important highs twice with very good precision. Still in the same chart, we can see another example, perhaps in a smaller flow, of the Euler Fibonacci zone capturing an important low after being plotted on the price factors highlighted in black. Still in the same chart, we can find another instance where the ratio works well pointing a low. This time I also added a frequency line at the lows. This frequency line catches 12 lows without violating candle bodies before capturing the reversal low a 13th time. In this next chart, we have an example of a standard pitchfork with the Euler Fibonacci extension added to it, capturing the long-term expansion of a downtrend. Notice how the zone catches the lower frequency at the very bottom of the trend. Once again, this is something that the original pitchfork would not show. In this next chart, we can see the Euler Fibonacci zone in the extension tool plotted on green vectors in a downward movement. I also drew a standard pitchfork in the larger flow going down. Notice how the lowest low occurs when price meets the center line of the fork in combination with the Euler Fibonacci zone. Notice also how price comes back to the zone two more times to give free entry opportunities to the upside. Still in the same chart, we can find another instance where the Euler Fibonacci zone lands on the same area. Here I plotted the extension tool once again in the price vectors highlighted in orange. Observe how the green and orange zones from different vectors end up converging. This is what integrated technical analysis is all about, finding the convergence of tools or places where tools intersect. That's how you increase the chances of success in trading. However, finding such places requires a good knowledge about many different tools. That's it for this video. I hope you were able to add something new and useful to your arsenal of trading tools. If you wish to learn how to trade with professional tools, please send me an email at support at fractalflowpro.com or check my website fractalflowpro.com for video courses and ebooks of various kinds. If you enjoy the material I produce, please help support the channel by clicking the like button, subscribing to the channel, activating the notifications button, sharing the video, and by leaving your feedback below in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next videos. Take care.